Hi, this is Tori Wheel with the Oracle Technology Network. We're here live on the floor of JFocus in Stockholm, Sweden, and I'm speaking to members of the Java community, and I have David Cordelius, who's oh, with me. Hi. And I hear you are master of the curly bracket. Yeah, I, I master curly brackets. I like nesting things all the time. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So you are also a co-founder of Arduino, yeah. correct? Yeah, that's right. Yep. So tell me a little bit about what's going on in Arduino land. Well, the Arduino platform, as you know, is, uh, is, uh, is getting bigger. We're using it. I mean, we started teaching designers about digital technology, and then we jumped into other fields. And one of the fields we are working very actively is in the Internet of Things, because we have a pretty nice hardware abstraction that allows people coding for the physical world in a very easy way. And that's actually why I came to this uh, conference, to talk about the relationship between the Ar Arduino, the physical world, and how can that be made. Right, and I noticed your sweatshirt, which I have to say is pretty impressive. That's I know. a little bit old school there. Yeah, I think I also think that copyright has expired on the logotype. So I think for the next <laughs> A Focus conference, you could actually make the the C instead of the K with the Commodore C. Nice. I was totally calm. That's and for the T-shirt. That was the Commodore 64, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Or I mean, I read about correctly. So um, tell me what you're doing on a Commodore 64. Well, I was actually very active in uh, reselling copied games. I bought myself a bicycle out of that when I was 12. Uh, yeah, I, would, I, would my, I got my first computer when I was nine, and uh, I was always very interested in electronics. I wanted to make an LED panel, so I made an LED panel with, like, I think it was six times six LEDs, so it was controlled from the Commodore, so I had to make my own program to control it through a port and stuff. And you were talking about maybe putting a JVM on a Commodore 64. <laughs> yeah, right? as, as you know, pre prior to this uh, interview, we were talking about just uh, it would be really great to actually add JVM to Commodore 64. Because in, in like not things that, that don't require like high refresh speeds, like you know measuring temperature Less in the than North Pole. Less than a day and, or something, right? Yeah, 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 kind of like thing. And short programs like two lines, like read this variable and print it out, things like that. Right, exactly. But it, it is kind of, I mean, even though it's a joke, it kind of is a good point that you can put the JVM on almost anything, and your imagination is just your limitation on where sensors could go and what they can monitor in the real world. Yeah, I think I think it's all. It's only about. I mean, I, I am a strong defender of the tools in the right context. Mm, so mm -hmm. I think what matters really is the context you're working with. So if you're in a certain context, you could totally apply whatever tools as long as they fulfill the needs that right. you that you want to to convey. So it's like. JVM on 64, why not? I yeah. mean, 64K, I mean, look at that. <laughs> yeah, well, it depends on what you're monitoring, as we discussed, right? Mm -hmm. So, something. As you know, yeah. the, the first basic for Commodore was actually uh, written by uh, Microsoft. So, I wonder if Bill Gates will be up for the quest, right? <laughs> making, it, it, the, yeah. making the thing happen. Okay, so what is the coolest Arduino project that you've seen <laughs> out there? <laughs> that's, that's a question I get a lot. Yeah. That's a question I get a lot. Um, I mean, for me, it's really hard to answer because as one of the founders of the platform, uh, I've been amazed since day one. You know, it's like people started to make things really, really fast. And, and uh, not only our students, but people we, we don't know about. We never saw them before. And there's everything. There's uh, DNA replicators or sequencers, sorry. There is uh, all the three open source 3D printer community is built on Arduino technology to, in mm -hmm. one way or the other. Either they use Arduino boards or they use the Arduino ID that, by the way, is made in Java to to program their <laughs> program their printers. There is a satellite from a Californian company called NanoSatisfy uh, that runs experiments in space for high schools. You can like rent your slot and make your experiment. Is having eight Arduino like computers inside. That's cool. Um, so it's really everything. So, and many, many people are, are like using the Arduino hardware abstraction to run other things. Because in the end, what we do is that we provide people a software layer on top of the physical world that allows interacting in a very easy way with basically 15 basic commands or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. So you can read the SPI port. You can write to the i square c You can write a pin with a certain frequency. It's like very basic level things. So it can be ported to any hardware architecture easily and quickly, to the point that last summer we were actually we got a request in our in our office in Malmo to hack 
Sony Smartwatch and we made an open source version of the Sony Smartwatch operating system in Arduino. Wow. So, so <laughs> just give us hardware, we just make it run. Excellent. But we are not a JVM, but we do our work. Yeah. <laughs> we are with Arduino yeah. and Commodore 64. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 interesting. <laughs> um, so if I'm a developer and I'm like, oh yeah, IoT is hot, I want to get in on this, where's a good place to start? With IoT? Well, I have to say, IoT is a complex, it's a very complex system. Um, because it implies that you need to have sensors and actuators in the physical world. They right. need to talk to some sort of gateway, and they need to talk to an infrastructure. So I think like a very easy way to start really is uh, using a sensor board, like let's say an Arduino Uno, that will read some sort of sen temperature sensor or whatever from the room you're at, post that into a computer, and use the computer as your first gateway to the internet, mm -hmm. and then build an infrastructure that will operate on HTTP requests. Then, um, uh, like of course, a very easy way is making something on PHP. You can write something on 20 lines of PHP that runs on any Apache server anywhere. Most people have like, Apache servers for their personal websites and stuff. The thing is that that doesn't really escalate well. The question is what happens between that oh, and, okay. you know, and the, and the 20,000 users per minute oh, kind of so website. So from hack to production, there's yeah, a great Yeah, it's leap. a big difference. Mm -hmm. I think that's really where Java comes in the game, right? Like mm -hmm. on the infrastructure is where uh, we see a huge use of it, as well as on, on gateways. Like smaller sensors, probably be more like low level, like very simple, you know, like Bluetooth chip with a sensor and a right. battery. That talking to already like gateways and infrastructure is, is right. where we see the bigger languages. Right. So I know that cars right now are <laughs> moving data centers, correctly. Yeah, yeah, right. There's so many sensors that are. Yeah, they, they have uh, up to 100 or 100 processors mm -hmm. to do a lot of small operations. In Arduino, we want to work with the paradigm of thinking that every single sensor will be digital. Of course, the, the transducer to the world is 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 analog, like. LDR reads the amount of light in the room, and uh, that gives you a voltage, and, and that goes to an analog to digital converter, and so on. But in, in our mind, we believe that in a very short time, the value of processors will be so low that the sensors themselves, they will just answer directly with a digital value. Oh, so the discussion will be between sensors, it's right? It actually will be at, at a digital level. It's like right now, let's say this is a board and mm -hmm. it's a sensor, and most of the times what we are doing is that this sensor reads, gives an analog value to my board, and then my board digitizes it, and then I use it. Right. I really believe that in the future, this thing will be digital right away. Like, if, you, if for like half a euro, you can get a sensor that gives you directly, like, uh, let's say, XML data out of this sensor, right? Then you will totally want everything digital. It will make the whole thing system so much simpler. Uh, and I think we're really close to achieve that. Really, processors right now are reaching that sweet price of like 20 cents, 30 cents, you know. Right. So it's about time. Yeah. So we're in a really cool space and a cool time, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it will get even cooler. <laughs> but, <laughs> but at this point, it's already very nice because I think it's, it's possible to foresee the possibilities. So it's, we're really at this point where we can imagine a lot of situations where sensors are, will, are going to be relevant. And we can clearly see and anticipate, you know, potential uses and businesses that can be built on top of that. Great. Well, thank you for dropping by. I know you yeah. have to take off, so I appreciate yeah. it, David. It's good talking to you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is Tori Wilt with the Oracle Technology Network. Thank we, you. Uh, yeah, thank you.